we officially start, I'm going to ask the driver of a Suzuki Swift motor vehicle, license number 8951HZ. You're blocking someone, so please remove your vehicle. Can we please stand for the national anthem? Worship the Mayor, Councillor Donovan Mitchell, Mayor of Mandeville, Honorable Garfield Green, Custos of Manchester, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. The Planning Institute of Jamaica welcomes you to this, the first of the series of our annual, or sometimes not annual, Dialogue for Development series. We seek to engage your participation in this event, and it is not by any chance that we are coming to Mandeville today. This is where we started. Just a few housekeeping matters, or one housekeeping matter. The restrooms are to your right. I'm pointing to your right. Or outside, the stairs go up at the side beside the tent. I'll go straight into the program and my apologies for the late start. Mr. Donovan Mitchell, Mayor Donovan Mitchell, a born person of the parish of Manchester. He is the present mayor and he has been mayor since 2016. He has been councillor from 1998 to 2003 and from 2005 to the present. Mr. Mitchell has a love for his parish. He's very energetic and he believes in moving his parish and Mandeville in particular forward. I just now ask Mr. Mitchell to move to bring welcome from the parish of Manchester. To be in here, when I see some of the faces, I feel like I'm somewhere else. Um, when you are at a function like this, talking about the age and development, there are some songs because I was grown in church that comes to mind. Well, wife had found the model church and worship here today. I see my godmother over there, Sister Scale. I see my uncle sitting in the front row. I see Auntie Joy. I see everybody. Nevertheless, moderator, Mrs. Blake, Honorable Custos, distinguished citizens of Manchester, distinguished visitors from other parts of the country, students, 
ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to welcome you to Manchester. It is indeed an honor to be the host parish for the very important meeting, the POJ's Dialogue for Development Outreach Series 2019. Empirical data suggests that people worldwide is living longer. Today, for the first time in history, most people can expect to live beyond age 60. According to the World Health Organization, by 2050, the world's population aged 60 years and over is expected to reach 2 billion, up from 900 million in 2015. Today, 125 million people are aged 80 and over. By 2050, 80% of all older people will live in low- and middle-income countries, which include Jamaica. This reality of aging population has to be at the forefront of our discussions as we develop and advance our sustainable development plans. While we embark on the theme for the event, Aging and Development, Exploring Myths, Exploring Opportunities, we have to be cognizant of one of the biggest myths in the mind. That is, our aging population cannot contribute significantly to our development and is rather perceived as mere dependence of the state. Based on the projected life expectancy, our conversation and planning need to surround this misnomer. There has to be more meaningful dialogue, opportunities to engage aging members of our society in more sustainable ways. As a matter of fact, because we realize what is happening nationally, the Manchester Development Order of 2015, the Town and Country Planning Revised Act of 2001, and the Building Act of 2018 is cognizant of the aging population. And so within all those three pieces of laws, we make sure that the aging population is taken care of. How is it that you build your houses? How is it that you make way instead of building 12 stories to build them at a certain level that people can enjoy their lives, that you build communities that will come together in one area? And because we realize that we are continuing to look at the things we need to do both as a parish and as a country, we also have to consider how we develop our physical infrastructure to our built environment as we must accommodate the peculiarities of aging population. Mandeville is well aware of the population changes and has instituted a number of measures to take care of our senior citizens and to welcome our returned residents, especially those who love to come to Manchester. Manchester is one of the first parishes to have a chapter of the Caribbean community of retired persons. We are in constant dialogue, and as a matter of fact, in 2016, when I took over, as 2017, January, I met with NCU and uh, some other stakeholders, and we started to look at how is it that we develop the parish along the lines that the population of Mandeville is getting older, and that Mandeville is the best place that the return residents would want to come and live. And so we look at health and well-being, we look at a whole lot of things, and so today I am glad that we are having this discussion here in Mandeville. It was Donna Laird who states, to forget the elderly is to ignore the wisdom of the years. And not only him would have said so, but Paul in his letter to Timothy says that we must teach, the older women must teach the young women how to keep their husbands. And that is wisdom. And so, ladies and gentlemen, let us put our minds and experiences together as we dialogue and seek to explore the opportunities for the aging and development. May God bless you and God continue to bless Jamaica land we love. Thank you, Mayor Mitchell. He has appropriately summed up what this dialogue is about. He's quite aware, and Mayor Mitchell, we might just have to take you around the island with us. We'll have remarks from Honorable Gar 
Raphael Green. He's a costus of Man M Manchester. He's a businessman, an engineer, the former president of the Manchester Chamber of Commerce. And he told me when he got here that he has an engagement very soon in his very busy schedule and, his, and the roles that he plays in the, in the parish. Put your hands together and welcome <laughs> Councillor Garfield, the Costas Garfield Green. Let me very first of all apologize for being late. I arrived here late and it's my first occasion that I've turned up here since being appointed to Custis and I was late. But when I came to office and I was told um, I have to be careful and have too many engagements in one day. You know, there was an instance where my predecessor went to a a function mayor and she was sitting there the whole time and at the end she realized she was at the wrong function <laughs> <laughs> so I, I arrived early at the Mandeville Hotel decided to look over my speech and realized that the speech I had which my assistant put in my portfolio was for my next engagement <laughs> so I called and they awaited on them to bring it and then I realized that it was at Dolphin's. So please accept my apologies. Mrs. Blake Hall, Senior Director of the PIOJ, His Worship the Mayor, Councillor Donovan Mitchell, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, visitors to the parish, students, good morning, and a warm welcome to Manchester. As Custos, I must welcome you to the beautiful parish of Manchester, and I hope you will come back because of the climate and the warmth of our people. Aging is an interesting issue, not only because each of us can relate to it, but because it has much broader significance for our country. Many Jamaicans have had opportunities to work abroad because of the labor market in some developed countries has been depleted by aging, places like Canada, the USA, and the UK. As we will hear today from the Planning Institute of Jamaica, our demographic structure is now aging, and we will have an opportunity together to examine the implications and to consider our responses. As Custos of Manchester, I can confidently confirm that in Manchester and our neighboring parishes, we want to see more employment and expansions of our economic base so that our fellow citizens, youth, middle-aged and aging persons are engaged to their potential. This means that we must do our best to ensure that our most vulnerable persons are able to contribute as they are able to. We will need to invest more in ICT in our homes, businesses, and public services. We will need to improve our infrastructure so that persons who live with disabilities especially those dis disabilities that happen naturally to most of us due to aging. The challenges in our populations are structure in a development issue. And this dialogue is an important step to identify our solutions. Let us explore the myths, both aging and explore the opportunities. I look forward to today's discussion and I thank the PIOJ for returning again to our parish and the county.
in which we lived. Thank you very much, and I wish this workshop all the success it deserves. Have a great day. Thank you, Costas Green. I will now give a brief background of the Dialogue for Development series. The Planning Institute of Jamaica is the foremost planning agency of government, and the functions include initiating and coordinating the development of plans, programs, and policies for the economic, social, cultural, and physical development of Jamaica. It also includes advising the government on major issues relating to these areas and undertaking research on national development issues. In order to gather public participation while sharing information on critical issues and areas, the PIOJ seeks to engage the public through the Dialogue for Development series. The Dialogue for Development series started in 2001. And at that time, and it still exists, there, are, there were two goals. To engage civil society in dialogue and get their participation in matters relating to the economic and social development of Jamaica. Also, to use the information generated from these public lectures and fora for policy formulation. In 2001, the first forum was held in Kingston, and it was centered around the findings of the Human Development Report for Jamaica. The lecture was delivered by the then, then Director General, Dr. Wesley Hughes, and the title, Jamaica, From Creative Adaptation to Sustainable Transformation. In 2002, three forums were held before the actual lecture, the first in Mandeville, one in Portmore, and the other in Savannah Lamar. The public lecture entitled Education and Gender, Performance of Boys and its Implication for Sustainable Development was done, done by UWI lecturer, Professor Vereen Shepherd, and the lecture was entitled Challenging Masculine Myths, Gender, history and development in Jamaica. In 2003, the theme was sustainable rural development, a strategy for national advancement. One goal was to get input from citizens for the preparation of a sustainable rural development policy and a sustainable rural development strategy. In 2004, the theme was entrepreneurship, a path to national development. Two forums were held in Kingston and Montego Bay, and the lecturer at the time was Dr. Marshall Hall. In 2006, the theme, globalization, rural development, and tourism, and it was based on the Jamaica Human Development Report 2005. Three fora were held, Maypen, Ocheria, and Lucy. In 2007, the lecture, Tax Reform for Stability and Growth in Jamaica, and it was done by lecturer Professor Zita Tanzi. In 2008, the Dialogue for Development effort was put into the promotion of Vision 2030 Jamaica National Development, National Development Plan, Jamaica's first long-term development plan. Consultations were held island-wide, and the lecture, Framing Social Development Policy Through Research, was done by Pat Professor Patricia Anderson. 
in 2009. The lecture was a presentation entitled Growth in the Post-Commodity Production Era in Jamaica and was done by Professor Roma. In 2010, the lecture, Building Climate Resilience, Economies and Societies, the Way Forward. The lecture was Ulrich Scott, Sci Science Advisor, Caribbean Community Climate Change Center. In 2013, the lecture was Going for Growth in the Jamaican Economy in a Contractionary Environment. And it was done by Mr. Richard Bayer. CEO of Sajipol, Jamaica. In 2015, the lecture entitled Evaluating and Affirming Vision 2030, Jamaica. The lecturer was Professor Manuel Atevedo Jaramillo, and he, was from, and he is from Colombia. In 2017, the Jamaica We Want Vision 2030, Jamaica, Advancing the Sustainable Development Goals, leaving no one behind. And Ambassador Decima Williams, Director of ECLAC Sub-Regional Headquarters for the Caribbean, did that lecture. Today, we're looking at aging and development, exploding myths, exploring opportunities. From the number of lectures I've mentioned, you would have realized that we have covered a number of areas. And these areas range, the range from the social, economic, and the environment. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you will find the information we share today rewarding. And also that your participation will not go unmentioned as we seek to garner your support as we move Jamaica forward. You'll notice on your program there is a poem. This poem was written by a member of staff of the PRAG. Mrs. Collette Robinson is the Director for Social Protection and Gender Unit. She has done very well as a writer, not only of poems, she has had many awards from JCDC. It is no mistake that today we'll hear one of her poems. Unfortunately, Tashna Morris, Mrs. Tashna Morris is not here to do the poem, but we have another member of staff who is equally competent, Ms. Stacyana Robinson. Kitty child, it finally catch me. When me wake up this morning, me leg them feel weak. Grey hair, they come out of me eyelash. And me forget which part me put me teeth. Whoa. But it's so go anywhere, Miss Kitty. Everybody have a time and a place. That's why we have to live good together. So we three score and 20 do we. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it serious, Miss Kitty, it's not only me one grappling with age. The whole Jamaica society aging. We all have to get upon the same page. Say what me mean? Although we having more senior people and them living till hundred plus tax, we also have enough, enough working smarty to produce and invest outside the box. Yes, ma'am, we have to take advantage of the population structure. How much picnic? How much seniors? How much youth and change up the economy if you match that? 
so we can advance the development of the truth. Yes, one good business can lead to another. And before you know it, more people imply. Then we make sure everybody contribute pension so that into poverty, poverty, nobody do have to die. The whole country have to get upon the program, government policy, private sector and thing, fix health service, education, and housing. We respond to this thing called aging. The elders, them have the wisdom and experience. The picnic, them have energy and intellect. Persons with disability full of a courage. And the youth, them, bad pan the intimate. Yes, Miss Kitty, aging bigger than sugar and arthritis. No opportunities for big business and small. If you ask me, Population aging is a bonus. Make with boost development for one and all. Whoa. Thank you, Stacey Ann. So you know the quality production, the poems and other things that Mrs. Robinson has been producing. We'll go straight into the presentation, Aging Implications, Aging and Development, no, the presentation is on Aging, Implications and Opportunities for Development. And it will be done by Mr. Andre Richards. And he made sure to remind me, and he wants you to know, that he is from Manchester. He's a senior demographer at the PIOG. And Ms. Camille Graham, social protection analyst at the PIOG. Please help me welcome Andre. Good morning. I was born and raised in Somerset, in Northwest Manchester, and I went to the Manchester High School. <laughs> yes. This morning, the Planning Institute will be presenting on the topic, Aging, Implications and Opportunities for Development. The structure of the presentation will be features of population aging, a population overview of this region, and social, and imp social economic and environmental implications and opportunities of population aging. I will be dealing with the first two, and Ms. Graham will be dealing with the implications and opportunities. The world's population is aging. Virtually every country in the world is experiencing growth in the number and proportion of older persons in their population. Population aging, which results in the increasing share of older persons in the population, is poised to become one of the most significant social transformations of the 21st century, with implications in nearly all sectors of society, including labor and financial markets, the demand for goods and services, such as housing, transportation, and social protection, as well as family structures and intergenerational ties. Over the years, over the last 25 years, Jamaica has made, Jamaica has seen significant changes to its demographic profile. Population growth is currently bordering on zero with fertility at or near replacement level. Life, ex life expectancy at birth is almost 75 years, reflecting marked reductions in infant and child mortality. 
the combined effects of changes in fertility and mortality have resulted in an aging population characterized by declining youth and increasing working age and elderly age groups. In addition, the fall in population growth is also impacted by high rates of external migration. Jamaica has seen significant levels of highly educated and skilled human resources leaving the country each year. A large proportion of this group is also in their prime reproductive years. One of the main models which has been used to expound how population has moved is the demographic transition model. The demographic transition model refers to a change from high births and death rates to low births and death rates in a society resultant of a move from an agricultural based population to an industrialized one. Jamaica is currently at the advanced level of stage three of the, of the demographic transition. This is evident in the, de in the demographic aging of the population, decreasing births and relatively low death rates. So we are somewhere there in stage three. The share of the child population has been declining rapidly. Based on the 2000 estimates, based on our 2018 estimates, the child population currently accounts for 21%, which is approximately half of the share of the child population in 1960. Currently, the largest proportion of the population falls within the working age group, where you're seeing 69.7%. This situation leads to a demographic bonus. I called a window of opportunity where the increased numbers in the working age population can boost economic growth, savings, and investment. The dependent elderly population has been increasing in share over the years as well. That's where you have your 65 plus. You can see we moved from 4.3 to 9.3% in 2018 in share. Based on the recent UN projections for Jamaica, by 2050, there will be an almost historic crossover between the share of the child and dependent elderly population in Jamaica. The child population will account for 16.9%, the working age population 64.6%, and the dependent elderly population, those 65 and over, will account for 18.5% 18, 18 of the population. One of the structures that population that demographers and population practi practitioners have used over the years to examine the shift in the population has been the population pyramid. The population pyramid represents graphically what was just said previously. So you can see in 1991 where the blue section is. That was the population structure. You can see the bulge at the, at the base. Over time, those persons, that large, youthful population, moved up. So you can see in 2001, the red section, where towards the middle, became a bit wider. And in 2018, you're seeing where some of those persons who were in the middle in 2001 are moving up. As a result, we are having this aging population. What does this mean for us? Over the years, Jamaica has, over the years, data for Jamaica has shown on average that females, as can be seen here, have had a higher life expectancy than males. Women make up a significant majority of the older population and increasingly so with age. Jamaica has made significant strides in increasing life expectancy at birth over the years. In 1921, the average number of years at birth was 37.9 years. By 1970, it was 68.5. Average life expectancy at birth on, based on the 2011 population and housing census was 74.2 years. So you're seeing we're living longer. 
One, um, however, there's a difference between the life expectancy rate for males and females. Based on the 2011 population census, males live on average of 70.4 years and females 78 years, a difference of 7.6 years. One of the main difference one of the main reasons for the difference in life expectancy is the high rate of premature death among males due to risky lifestyle practices, accidental deaths, crime and violence, and of course the increasing number of non-communicable diseases related deaths. So in summary, you're seeing increasing working age and elderly population and declining child population. As a result, the, inter the intergenerational household has changed. Back in time past, grandma and grandpa would have about 14 children. My grandmother had eight. My grandmother by my father's side. Yes, paternal, yes. And <laughs> those persons have lesser and lesser as you go along. And we're, we're currently at the point where we're having households with one or no children at all. As a result of the change in the household structure, we're seeing that there's a fall in dependency ratios. The reduction in dependency ratios has, has helped has contributed to this demographic dividend or this demographic bonus because you're having the working age population is catering for less dependents. So you have less children, zero to, five, zero to 15, sorry, zero to 14, and less, majority of your population is in the working age group. And because you're having less children and still a relatively small portion of your population is in the elderly age group. You have this large group of persons who are not necessarily taking care of any dependents. That's what is expressed here. However, as persons transition out of the working age group into the dependent elderly population, the, dep the dependency ratio will rise again, generating new requirements for older persons in terms of health care care provisions, economic security, social protection, and other factors. So what we currently have is this demographic dividend. In your demographic dividend window, the, la the share of the child population, the share, meaning how big it is in the picture depicted there, as you can see in the pre-transition era, era the elderly population, the share of the elderly population was small. You had a, a larger child population, but this large child population transitioned into a large working age population. And in term, this large working age population, due to increases in life expectancy, they'll transition into this large elderly population. So that's what's depicted here. Briefly, I'm going to touch on the population situation within the region, within this region. Based on the 2011 population census, the population of St. Elizabeth was 150,205 persons. For Manchester, it was 189,797, and Clarendon, 245,103. Based on our 28 population estimates, 2018 rather, population estimates, the population in St. Elizabeth is estimated to be about 151,800, Manchester 191,900, and Clarendon 247,700. And the share there, the percent, um, the percent contribution towards the total population, St. Elizabeth currently accounts for about 5.6% of Jamaica's population. Manchester, 7%, and Clarendon, 9.1%. Based on the population and housing census of 2011, and this is not 
all that good, good, good. But um, you can see the share of the population in your under 15, your 15 to 29, 30 to 64, and 65 years and over. The parishes of St. Elizabeth and Manchester at that time had more had a larger share of persons in the 65 and over age group when compared to Clarendon. And this, this pictogram is also in our booth there, so you can look at it later, up close. I will now hand over to Ms. Graham, who will continue with the rest of the pre presentation. Good morning, everyone. I've been trying to figure out if it's deliberate that as we talk about aging, they've chosen two young looking persons in the carriers eh, to do the presentations. But if nothing else, what that does is demonstrate that a conversation about aging is really an inclusive conversation. It's not just about persons 60 years and older. So as we transition, in a few minutes to open discussion on the subject of aging and development, we want to take a few minutes to consider some of the social, economic, and environmental implications of the aging population in Jamaica. In other words, we want to look at what this population aging phenomenon means for all of us and how we can make it work in the best interest of all. So my colleague Andre has already touched on some of these implications and opportunities. So we'll only seek to broaden the discussion a bit more. Of course, the ideas and thoughts that will be presented are by no means exhaustive. And there is also the fact that there are sometimes ripple effects that are not easily discernible. So we look forward to hearing from you as the dialogue progresses. Now, Andre spoke to the impact of fertility and mortality rates on the age structure, which currently has more elderly and is the fastest growing segment, fewer children, and a large working age population. There was also brief mention of migration as a factor that influences what the population structure. Globally, migration has become quite a topical issue. Have you noticed? And as we talk about Jamaica as an aging population, we too must acknowledge the possible implications, yes? So as we consider the various forms of migration, internal migration, such as um, urbanization, external or international migration, so we have our returning residents, whether voluntary or involuntary, and other forms of migration, as we talk about the movement of purposes and persons in an aging society, we have to consider the possibility of certain age groups being concentrated in certain geographic areas and all its implications. If there is a greater proportion of older persons living in a specific area, what does that mean with respect to the provision of public services? The building of uh, or expansion of schools, for example. Will some schools have to be closed or merged with schools in neighboring communities as a child population shrinks? What about the provision of health care and so many other services? Do public service institutions have the capacity to offer the specialist services required of older populations? Do public service institutions have the capacity to offer the range of services, not only to an older population, but to an older population with a more diverse range of needs and preferences, taking into consideration those returning from overseas? Are there sufficient services to support the integration or reintegration process? And on a, on a broader national scale, as time progresses and the large working age population gradually transitions into the elderly age group, are we at risk of becoming overwhelmed by our aging population and will that make it necessary to consider migrant workers to supply the labor market, as is being discussed in the, some of the developed countries who are the advanced stages of aging. So we spoke earlier of the huge advantage the country currently has with its large working age population that bulge in the middle section that Andre spoke to. 
But for us to realize maximum benefit, there must be further reduction in unemployment and increased productivity in order to offset burdency, dependency burdens. The, the concept of active aging, have you heard that term? So the concept of active aging is, is being embraced as a country. And those of you who have looked through the national policy for senior citizens of Juvenile Green Paper, and I'm sure the council will be able to inform you afterwards, you will notice that that concept of active aging is um, reflected throughout. So that, that as persons live longer, they ought to have the opportunity to continue working longer if they so choose. But while we acknowledge that persons are living longer, we also know that many are living sicker. Without getting into too deep a discussion of non-communicable diseases and other age-related diseases, we know that while the concept of active aging and the economic benefits that can be derived are a reality for some, increasing care burden is a feature of aging societies. At the macro level, the magnitude of the burden of care, so we're talking about the physical, emotional, and financial strain that is placed on the caregiver, that burden may be greater in some cases than in others, depending on family structure and other support systems that may or may not be in place, with impacts that extend well beyond the family unit. And I try to illustrate it here in this little image. So consider, for example, the differences in experiences of a family with four children taking care of their elderly parents with health-related issues that impact daily living, as opposed to an only child having to do the same. Consider, too, that care work often falls on females, sometimes limiting their ability to participate in the labor market, and that that responsibility can sometimes plunge a family into poverty or deeper into poverty. The need for greater resources for healthcare provision then exists at all levels of the service delivery chain. Already, we can see emerging the various socioeconomic and personal financial implications that in themselves speak to the need for greater levels of social insurance coverage and we can see the potential increasing expenditure burden that may come about as a result of greater spending on social services and various forms of social assistance for the elderly. The, the unfortunate reality is that aging is associated with income insecurity, social isolation, illness, and disability. So while any discussion on aging populations will primarily center around older persons, that discussion must be accompanied by a conversation on deliberate planning and preparation across the age spectrum, from the young to the older, at all levels, the individual to broader society to policy. The conversation must be had if we are to avoid the experience of aging becoming an overwhelming challenge. Bear in mind, too, that the extent to which we individually make our plans and preparations will ultimately impact the extent to which the country's resources are allocated. As the proportion of the elderly population increases, there will be increasing pressure on the government to commit greater resources to that segment of the population. So if fewer persons plan for retirement, for example, in terms of NIS contributions and, and or some other private pension or investment, it creates a greater resource demand for the provision of social services to maintain an acceptable standard of living. Does, does that make sense? Okay. So with an aging population comes greater demand in various markets for goods and services that will require public sector involvement as well as private sector involvement to adequately meet these demands and to meet these demands in a manner that will hopefully reduce vulnerability and minimize inequality in the allocation of resources to older versus younger segments of the population. Now we couldn't talk about the implications of population aging in Jamaica without talking about the environment implica environmental implications, particularly as it concerns matters of accessibility, functionality, and mobility. 
as the population ages, we must consider how towns and cities are organized, the physical layout, the consideration of varying needs in the design of transportation systems, consideration of how the elderly access public services, and by access, we're not only talking about physical access, or even talking about how the service itself is accessed. So we're, we're talking about, for example, the increased use of technology. How are persons in the older population being assisted to make the, that transition to using um, technologies? In our city and town planning, is consideration given to recreational spaces that don't only cater to the young, so it's more than just a football field, but even allow for multi-generational usage and spaces that encourage interactions across generations. There are also implications with respect to the location and design of homes. What are the options for independent living or for assisted living even? As we aim for greater and greater development over time, the ultimate goal has to be a universal design approach where the environment is designed in such a way that it can be accessed and used to the greatest extent possible by all people, regardless of their age, size, or ability. Do you agree? So now we want to touch on some of the opportunities. And, and what we're going to look at is by no means, as we said before, exhausted. And we want to hear your thoughts as well. Hopefully, by now, some of you um, should already be able to think of some of the opportunities that exist in this population dynamic that we're facing. Yes, we acknowledge that an aging population can pose significant challenges, but we argue that there are tremendous opportunities presented by the changes in our population structure if approached with the right mindset, accompanied by appropriate policy responses by government, civil society, and business interests. There are huge gains to be made if an innovative approach is taken, gains that can be realized not only by big business, but young persons interested in entrepreneurship and under, under the means of meeting the needs. Small and medium-sized businesses, micro-businesses, and engagement will ultimately redound to the benefit of society. Many of the opportunities that we will identify are located within this economy referred to as the silver economy, which is a term that has been coined as a play on the silver hairs or the gray hairs of the elderly. They might need to change that term because Andre and myself and young persons, we a lot of gray hairs going on up in the head. <laughs> and it's a term that is used to refer to all, all economic activity that serve the needs of older persons, including the products and services they purchase directly and the further economic activity this spending generates. So the, the silver economy is not only about the elderly. It's not a single market. It speaks to a unique cross-section of economic activities related to production, consumption, and trade of goods and services relevant for older people, both public and private, and including both direct and indirect effects. In this is acknowledged the fact that population aging impacts every or almost every market and industry. And here we have listed just a few with real opportunity even within our Jamaican context. In housing, and for time, I'll have to cut the examples. But in housing, for example, there is demand for home conversion. I know a colleague of mine is facing that dilemma right now, trying to figure out who the persons to come in and retrofit the bathroom, for example, so that it is amenable to the needs of an older person who has some physical challenge. What about the development of housing villages, specifically for the elderly, and that support independent living? There are more innovative ideas too, such as that being implemented at a Canadian university where students are placed free of charge with all the persons who live alone in the community. And that, and that is an idea that doesn't require a university or some big business person to implement and, and realize benefits. We, the regular person, can engage in these kinds of activities. 
In healthcare, the opportunities are almost endless. Bearing in mind, too, the life course approach that should be taken in addressing aging. So we're talking about preventive care, as well as therapeutic, curative, and all other forms of care possible for improved quality of life. Take the work of a caregiver, for example. We are told that if global investment in the care economy were to double, it would result in the creation of 269 million jobs worldwide. Let's think about that for a moment. And we all know a brother or sister or auntie or somebody who's taking care of someone and who perhaps can't work in a traditional employment sector, work sector, and is not being compensated in any way for the work being done. Opportunities, there are opportunities in transportation, a special transportation for the elderly, for example, which I know exists in other countries. Opportunities in recreation, entertainment, sport, leisure. We don't often think of persons such as yourself wanting to engage in recreation. So you come to a town like Mandeville, and I lived here for four years, by the way, so I can kind of claim a little bit of citizenship. You come to Mandeville, and after 6 o'clock and everything shuts down, there is nothing much to do, whether young or older. There are real ideas, thoughts that can be generated and benefits to be derived from investing in that kind of um, an economy. In investment and insurance, as persons are living longer, demand horizons are also expanding, providing opportunity for long-term investment in real estate, financial instruments, and other legacy goods and services. Goods and services which can pass down to generations. As we emphasize the huge working age population that currently exists, we cannot ignore the fact that there are many older persons who still have much to contribute to the labor market and who even wish to be in employment. As that population increases, we have to figure out how to get them more involved. And that's already taking place in certain sectors, so we know that there are some retired teachers who are being recalled to assist in the classroom. So we need to think about the inclusion in the labor market, and this inclusion is not only about productivity. Where we're talking, too, about the added benefits, um, such as maintaining their purchasing power. We're talking about income security, financial independence, and so on. Sometimes when we talk about the food industry, we immediately think restaurants or some other big business, yes? But there is opportunity as you consider, for example, catering to the varying dietary needs. What about preparation of customized meals to fit the health-related health dietary needs of the elderly within your own community? And I wish there were more young persons in the audience as these ideas are being thrown out. Or what about setting up a food delivery service from the market or the supermarket to your door for those who aren't as physically capable or those who just prefer the convenience of home delivery. There are opportunities in security, in communication and technology, virtual retirement communities, for example. Do you know that such a thing exists? Persons, older persons who wish to maintain their independence and live in their own homes but still wish to be connected to persons in their own age group and may not necessarily be in the geographical area where such persons are around, there's virtual retirement communities. E-health, delivery of health care service using the internet, and so on and so forth. There are opportunities in design of devices and infrastructure to facilitate mobility and access. So hopefully by now you realize that the opportunities really are endless. But of course, innovation and planning are required to derive the benefits that come with an aging population. So in conclusion, we simply want to reinforce the fact that changes in the population processes of birth, of fertility, mortality, and migration have dramatically influenced the growth, size, and age structure of Jamaica's population, resulting in an aging population. Our decisions and actions must respond in ways that take advantage of the development opportunities. There's much more that could be said, but we want to hear from you as well. So we thank you for allowing us to share with you our own thoughts and perspectives. We now look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.
Thank you, Camille and Andre. The driver of a white Wish Motor Vehicle 6429JB and another, a Silver Swift 8951HZ. You are blocking a warehouse. The persons there need to get in and you need to move away. If you are inside here, please allow the persons to bear the right to bear premises. So you have heard from Andre and Camille about the demographic dividend, about the implications, about the opportunities, and I'm sure you have a number of questions. I'm going to ask that the persons from PIOJ who will act as your resource persons come to the podium, please. Our gender specialist. Mm -mm. And our gender specialist, Mrs. Marika Brown Bailey, she will guide us through this section of the program. This long time, girl, me never see you. Come make we walk and talk. This long time, girl, me never see you. Come make we walk and talk. Stick with me now. Peel a drunk, cross it down, country top, pick out the blossom. Make we walk and talk, girl. Make we walk and talk. This long time, boy, me never see you. Come make we walk and talk. This long time, boy, me never clap no man. Come make we walk and talk. Peel a drunk cross it down, pantry top, pick out the blossom. Make we walk and talk, boy. Make we walk and talk. Good morning. Good morning. It is so good to be in Mandeville. Yes? And I'm sure that we have other persons from other parishes here. So let me see those who are from Clarendon. Woo! St. Elizabeth. And Manchester. So we are all represented. And the PIOJ is very happy to be here with you today to speak about this very topical issue. So we have heard from Andre and we have heard from Camille. We have also heard from the Costos and the mayor, and we have recognized that aging is not a problem, right? It is not a problem. Actually, aging is a big business. It is an opportunity. It, it, pres it presents many opportunities. So today, we want to hear from you. We want to know what are some of the implications, what are some of the issues that you have seen coming out of this this particular phenomenon, this aging phenomenon. But we don't only want to hear about the issues. We want to hear from you about some of the opportunities that you have seen. What are some of the things that you are seeing in Manchester, Clarendon, St. Elizabeth, that we can now take from you to see how best to develop policies and programs that fit this particular, this particular population. So don't be afraid to talk. We have some time, we don't have the whole afternoon, but we have some time and we want to hear from you. And um, as, we, as we engage, as we talk, um, we also want to hear about some of the things that you would want to see and some of the things that can change what you are seeing within your parishes. So ladies and gentlemen, based on the presentations that have gone before, we have been exposed to how the population has been changing and what is happening currently, we are seeing a large, larger working age population. Our children are getting, the, the child population is getting smaller. And eventually, the older population is going to get larger. Can, we, can you relate to any of those social, economic, or environmental um, 
issues of aging across your parish or even in your own community. So we have resource personnel here on the stage. Mr. Easton Williams, he is the Senior Director of the Social Policy Planning and Research Division within the Planning Institute of Jamaica. You would have been introduced to Andre Williams, he's a senior demographer. Sorry, Andre Richards, he's a senior demographer, and of course, Camille. And we also have additional resource personnel. We have Mrs. Colette Robinson, who is the director of the Social Protection and Gender Unit. Mrs. Denise McFarlane, the health specialist. So I know we're going to talk about all the health-related issues that might be affecting you. We have Denise here. We have Mrs. Patrine Cole, who is the GIS specialist, and she, ha she looks at spatial issues too, right? And we have the money lady, Ms. Hyacinth Morris, right? So we have a host of resource personnel. So we also will have a microphone that is roving. So when you feel led, we're going to ask you to just indicate, and we will take the microphone to you, and you will get the opportunity to ask your question and you'll also get the opportunity to respond to the questions that I'm asking. So can you relate to any social, economic, or environmental issues within your own space? How do you see the issue of aging in impacting any social issue, any environmental issue, any health-related issue, any economic issue? And the, the floor is now open. For instance, in the area of education, we have one university that is located here. We have a teacher's college, church teacher's college, and we may have quite a number of primary schools. But with the changing in the, the aging population, there may be the implication of not the parish or, or parishes not necessarily needing the basic schools or the primary schools because we may not have enough children to actually for, the, for them to utilize these particular spaces. Do you think that that may be an issue? Is that a particular issue um, when you look at the, the, the issue of aging within the community? Okay, there's a response across the spaces. So the microphone is coming to you. If I'm hearing correctly, you say that they are merging the basic schools. Yeah. Right, they are, yeah, go ahead. Okay, um, they are merging the basic schools to the primary schools. So I think, I think that aging will be um, Will be a result. Yeah. This will be a result of the issue of aging. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you indicate any particular in any particular area that this has happened so far? Yes, it has happened in my area, Saint Elizabeth. Pepper, Pepper, basic school has emerged with the Pepper primary, primary school. school. Yeah. Okay. So you see that the the there are not as much. Children, children in the children basic school, yes. For us to utilize. So has there been anything that has um, been done with that particular space? Um, the plan, the, where the basic school was? Yes. They plan to use it for the, um, the, the, the senior citizen club and the, um, and the, the, the community center. Okay, okay. Yeah. They told us that when they fix it up, we can have our meetings there. So do you think the community is in, a, in agreement with that particular move? Yeah. Okay, because yes. the space is being yes. utilized. Yes. Okay. Well, that is good. I don't know if that is any other, if a similar experience like that exists in the parishes of Manchester and Clarendon. Yes, there's a question. Good afternoon. Um, it's happening in the, my area down South Manchester there. Um, in Snowden, there's a 
beautiful basic school and for the past few years that school closed and it I don't see it put to no use I only see the gate closed uh, um, when I was passing I just see grass grow in a schoolyard uh, so that building that building did develop by um, JC help to build up and fence up that place and I don't see it putting to no use and at um, Frankfield school um, that's where they built the basic school also that is the um, Frankfield um, primary and the other schools around I don't see them put it to no use either so I don't know what is the uh, what the outcome will be Okay, okay. so we see that in some communities where the population has been aging, the, the, popula the, the age of the population is growing, um, that we are not seeing some of these schools in particular, these public spaces being utilized. And um, this can be seen as a waste in terms of our, our spatial, the uses of our spatial areas. So that is a recommendation. I don't know if the community has at any point in time made any recommendations for the uses of these areas because they may eventually become white elephants within the community. So um, that is a critical issue that we have to look at. When the, 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 the structure of the population changes, for example, when there are less children and there's less use or need for some of these spaces that our children use, what then becomes, um, what, what do we do with these, these spaces that are no longer being utilized effectively? In the, I don't know, anybody else? Okay, there's a response here. Not so much a response, but questions for PIOG and um, probably suggestions. Have you looked at the impact on GDP for the next couple of years that aging will have, especially in relation to pensions, NIS government pensions, what impact that will have? I know government has now increased your retirement age, or is increasing it from 60 right to 65, but thereafter you would have reached the peak. How, w how is it that you are preparing for that and the advice you would give to the government? The second thing is that you have within this region, I hear you say one university. No, we have a number of satellite universities here. We have, apart from NCU, Church and Sisters College offers master's degree. We have the International University of the Caribbean. We have UCC. We have a number of them. We have about 20 high schools in and around the Mandeville area. Schools are merging. Broadleaf Basic School no longer exists. It's merged with the Broadleaf Primary School. Hanbury Basic School no longer exists. It's merged with the Kendall Primary School. And so it is now a time, because it's a Ministry of Education decision, because what you have is a number of basic schools not offering that level of education that those little ones would need. And so because of that, they are submerging. But Housing in general, if you look, for example, in Kingston, what we are seeing now is these high-rise housing units. And as a matter of fact, what is as thought is that there's about 20,000 more housing units in Kingston that they actually need. And these are two- and three-story buildings. Are, is Master Builders Association seeking advice from PIOJ to say, we're going into housing, the government has just talked about some housing units in Portmore. Have you advised to say, listen to me, in the next 20 years, all of these houses will have no use because there are no elevators, there are no escalators, there are none of those other things that will help the aging population. So I think you may have to be a little bit more forward thinking and probably meet with these people and say, listen to me, I see you doing some things, but you need to stop and look for a while. I will encourage you to probably come to the council because, I mean, some of the things I hear and see a while ago is mind-boggling. We are currently reviewing our sustainable development plan with NEPA, and so some of the things you have said may be able to guide us in the way we go. We are planning to expand the town of Mandeville. 
where we put a new fire station, where we put a new police station, what we do with Brooks Park, that is 28 acres of land, that sort of thing. So that is where your planners would have to be a part of the planning process to guide us and to say, listen to me, it does make sense to put this here when the population is over here and the sort of aging group is here. So I encourage you to help us to think, and I'm encouraging you to come back when we're having some of these public sessions and to see how best you can help to guide the, the principles. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to allow Patrine, Mrs. Cole, our spatial planner, to respond. Morning. Um, good morning. <laughs> um, point taken, but I know that we generally sit on the committee with the team that is planning the local sustainable development plan, so we will continue to offer assistance in that area. Regarding what is happening in Kingston and the increased densification, um, we still have a challenge with urbanization. So a lot of the population is still moving into Kingston and the surrounding areas. And the houses are, are there to provide for those people there. So it's not that it's being wasted and we're building all these houses and we don't have a population um, to support. We do because a lot of people still are coming into Kingston and St. Catherine and Portmore. Um, but I know that's the direction that NEPA is going in terms of building up instead of out, because if we continue to build out, we will run out of space. So we have to build up. But I take your point that we definitely need to take in consideration putting in um, ease of access for the elderly population um, in these um, developments. Okay, morning everyone. My question is in relationship to opportunities for the silver, silver, economy. Silver, silver economy. And I refer to housing. Now we have seen from the recent drought, the environmental impact, that water harvesting is key. And I am wondering whether or not there are some considerations being given to incentivizing uh, the elderly, the senior citizens, to make adjustments to their houses so that we can uh, harvest water, whether it's going to be through uh, concrete structures to the house modification or through incentives to allow us to, to obtain catchment facilities, uh, water resources planning, so that at least we can have more water at our disposal. That's my question. Yes, thank you. Mrs. Robinson? It's, it's a question with a solution. Right. So the question is, are there going to be any kind of incentives for senior citizens to get benefits, for example, to building material that we can use to make adjustments, to put water harvesting uh, facilities to our houses, or even to purchase black tanks at reduced cost so that we can have water. And also the recycling of water. What technical plans can we have in place to help us to recycle water so that at least some of the gray water can be used to water our lawns and do other things rather than trying to use uh, potable water for that? Thank you. That's an excellent um, recommendation. I am not aware currently of any such incentives or how we can best incentivize, but we, that could be a recommendation that is taken uh, by the municipal corporation in terms of trying to, to best incentivize and to see how, how we can encourage persons to do or to, to, to have some amount of, to have water harvesting so that, you, because water is essential. So you would, especially for this particular uh, community, so you would need that as a, a resource. Um, good morning. Regarding, Mr. Mayor, regarding the question about how the changes in the population structure 
if we're doing any studies regarding GDP and pensions. The Planning Institute of Jamaica is currently in the initial phases of doing a national transfer account study. The national transfer accounts looks at how persons um, consume and produce throughout the life course and how this impacts public spending in health, in pensions, uh, all those things. So soon we will be able to inform the government based on the NTA study um, along that line. Thank you. I have an, uh, another issue that I want to bring to the fore, and it is the issue of health. Recognizing that an aging population requires greater levels of health care, and, um, bec and because, you, because this population is aging at a particular stage, there may be disabilities that develop. So are there are what are your experiences in terms of the services that are provided to the services in health that are provided to this particular population? Um, do you think the services are adequate? Can there be some, um, some level of improvement? What would you like to see in terms of health care and health, health provisions as the population ages? A question across. Good morning. Good morning. My hand was up before you spoke, Miss. Sure, go ahead. And it's regarding health. Yes. I am just coming from the hospital across from there. And uh, I was there from after six this morning. And I just got through after about a little bit to 11. What I did there could have been done at other facilities. So I am wondering if some of these unused buildings could be used to expand the health facilities, especially for seniors, because they are excellent facilities, and many of us shy away from them because they are so crowded and, you know, they are so inconvenient. So could some of these buildings be used, or could we expand our health facilities to some of these unused buildings? Okay, thank you. So the recommendation is where there are underutilized facilities within the parishes or the communities that they may be used specifically to provide health services and health care to persons who are older. So that is our recommendation. There's another question across here. The, mic is, the microphone is coming. Yes, sir. Sure. I don't know, but it, it's very bad. Um, I took my brother last Thursday to the Mandeville Hospital from 2 o'clock. And my brother, is me taking care of him, he's the elder one for me. And I took him, and he, he cannot help himself. And I took him to Mandeville Hospital from 2 o'clock, and he never get to answer till after 11 in the night. Now, when I look on these conditions and when all the talk you talk, the doctors, them, every minute you hear them quarrel about razor pay and things like that. But let them get in the razor pay for when they're not looking after people in the right and proper way. They don't spare you no mind. You understand? Secondly, when I look on it, you hear them talk about um, dengue and all them something there. The whole of us grow up for a little child. And when I look on it, I know so that me no know nothing about garbage truck in you know, my youth days coming up. Me know so that my mother was such a decent woman. When she used her, her garbage, she always put it away in a, the farmer way of how she grew that she can put it. We never used to sewage, we used to pit, toilet, right. And now these man made Mosquito, where they making a the lab. Where them got a kill out people. When they mine the backside and leave the whole them in your district. Because Jamaica is only the, the, the area of where people live, them go go mine and do that. And them have no regard for citizens that live in the areas. And so, 
When them are tell you about help, are them a kill we? Would I still I'll do them say? Yet the people that live longer, would I still live much longer? But are them a kill we? We need some restriction to put to these things because we are taxpayer. This country belongs to us. And may I tell you, we want it to look into by the government and the people of Jamaica. I thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. I will allow the mayor because he has to leave to say something. Just very quickly, and I'm speaking as chairman of the local board of health at the Manchester um, Parish Council. Two quick things here it says. One, I don't think we understand the policies of hospitals. I encourage you to use the health centers. Let me tell you what happens. There are about four categories, and I want you to listen because it, it's not going to help if you go there at two with a belly ache because doctors do what they call emergency, urgent, priority one, priority two, and it goes to priority four. When you go there, you get a slip of paper that tells you that if you are at priority three and four, your average waiting time is six to eight hours. You have to read that because every time you are there and a patient comes in with an appendicitis problem, that person becomes an emergency patient and everybody goes to that person. The health centers now are being opened up until nine o'clock Mandeville Health Center with doctors. We are just about opening one at Ariwatch, a new health center. There's going to be an extension of the health center and Royal Flat to provide nurses and doctors like on a daily basis because we understand that there is pressure on the hospitals. It, one of the things the doctors have said to us is that what persons are doing, they have a belly ache all day and they stay home. They go to the hospital at 6 and when the doctor look at you, and let us not be afraid, the doctors know emergencies from all of that. They're not idiots, right? So you go there, you roll on your ball, but somebody coming in a motor vehicle accident, the doctor going to leave you and go deal with the accident. So what I'm encouraging, and one of the things that is happening in Mandeville now is that we must understand there are doctor's offices that opens up until 12 p.m. Because most times we go to the hospital, we get a prescription, the doctor look at us, him give us a prescription, and the pharmacy is closed. And that's what you wait eight hours for. I generally recommend to some persons, there are about three doctors right across from the hospital. They all work until 12. The pharmacy closes at about 11. If you go to the doctor there, because most times you go to the hospital, you have to pay for every single thing. You have to buy the syringe. You have to buy the dip for the urine, everything. So I encourage, use the, the health centers. The other things I hear the gentleman spoke about, mosquitoes. Let me tell you as we speak, up until last week, Thursday, the report from the Ministry of Health at our meeting is that there's 1,000 reported or s suspected cases of dengue in the parish and nine suspected deaths. It is not the holes at the bauxite companies. It's not the, it is what we call domesticated mosquitoes that breeds and gives dengue. So when you open the tin mackerel or the cans and you leave them around the house and the bottles and you throw them down, those are the mosquitoes that gives the problem. So we're asking you, yes, there's a problem, and I speak as a chairman, there is a serious problem with garbage collection for the last six to eight weeks in the parish. I have spoken with the minister, I have spoken with the executive director, there are some problems. And what we are asking you to do is to manage your garbage. When you peel the yam and the banana and the potato and all of that, don't put it in the garbage thing. Put it in the ground and put it around some flowers. Let it stay there and help. The cans and bottles, you pack them differently, put them one side. And deal with it that way because for the next probably two weeks or so, we'll still have the problems. They are waiting some trucks out of Kingston. And so for the time being, I am appealing to you, let us do the right thing in dealing with how is it that we deal with the garbage. All right, thank you very much. I have to leave. I'm addressing a function at 12 o'clock. Thank you very much, Mayor. I know that we have a number of burning question, questions or comments, 
But at this time, I, we had indicated earlier in the, in the presentation the concept of active aging. And uh, today we have a group coming out of the National Senior Citizens Council who will, through a dramatization, show us what is active aging. So we invite the group to come at this time to give us their skit, and it is entitled Demonstration for Development. Give them a hand, please. Exploding myths. Exploring opportunities. Me? You know see me? You know know me? Nobody here know me. Anyway. Anyhow, me want respect. But here I know, you see me? Uno fi love me. Me a whole woman, you know. See me a walk out with the chick. So me whole. So uno fi give me respect. Raji, Raji, answer me no boy, Raji, me can't hear you, come closer, your motor move, what you say, me can't hear, one time me could I hear good, good, you know, me hear all when people are chat me, what you say, me hear, your fist in them put all the hearing aid in my ears, me can't hear a little bit enough, so you try your best, nobody grumble, come me we hear you. Lord, I tell you something. Time hard, you know. Time hard. The little pension when I get my knife, he can't even buy food. He can't do nothing. He can't stop with that. You know, somebody thinks I'm a picking and I'm a whole age pension. But not no go so. Because right now they want help. Me want respect. Me want respect. Because me a farmer, me plant yam coke or dash in, me plant sweet potato, me plant, when you look on the bunch of banana and plant them when me cut, when you look on me pumpkin when me pick, and Senegal market for feeding nation, and you look on me, tell me about me hole, me hole about me no cold for me now, rub out me and me go. So me want respect. Keep no flour, no sugar in a me cupboard. Not to mention me little money. Me a fi fry your fi na me bosom. I want respect. Holy Mike. CJ, no answer. Shadeja, Kashan, imagine I'm a me grandchildren them, you know. I me a call them and no answer. I make daughter them their parent and them send a little money to me a Western Union. And can't even get in a policy. I need respect. Look at me. Look at me. I am a senior citizen. I mean I'm 60 plus and gradually growing older. Some of them say she can't hear. Some say she can't see. Some even say she full fool. Some say she can't read. But let me tell you something. I graduate with honors from my computer class. And you see when I ready, I WhatsApp and I where are the one name? I email. Oh yes. I email my daughter foreign 
saw, don't fool with me. So just look at me. Look at me. I want respect. We want respect. Thank you very much. And the choir says, yeah. National Senior Citizens Council and the members from this particular parish for putting together that very important and significant dramatization because older people need respect. We saw some very important issues coming out. The issue of dependency, the issue of not thinking that older persons need know how to use technology and the worth that technology is to persons who are older because they need it in terms of communicating, right? We also saw the issue of older persons needing pension and, and that level of security when you are in your older age. So thank you very much. Give them another round of applause. <laughs> We're going to go back to a round of questions or responses, and we have a gentleman across here. Please indicate um, where you're from, sir. Well, my name is National Housing Trust. Okay, good. I, I heard earlier a question and solution given by my gentleman in relation to the silver economy. And also, uh, later on, inter you made mention of the whole matter of persons who are getting older and who are disabled, and what are some of the things that can be done for these persons. From the National Housing Trust's point of view, what we have done over the years is that we have been very sensitive towards the aging population. For persons who have had their mortgages for 15 years or more, or if you're a public sector, 10 years or more, we provide for persons what we call a 15 plus or a 10 plus in the case of a, of a public sector worker of $2.5 million for you to retrofit your house. As you grow older, there are a number of changes that you would want to make Many persons, they plan ahead. So while they're still working before they get to the age of retirement, a number of persons have utilized this facility to retrofit their houses to suit them as they grow older. The other part of it is that for persons who have a persons with disability in their house or they have a disability themselves, NHT also provides a grant for persons like that to, to put in the necessary facilities for ease of access to in to their houses and within their houses as well. So those persons, they can come to the National Housing Trust and they can speak with us and we'll tell you exactly what you need to do in order to access these benefits and grants. Thank you very much. So we are aware of some of the services, some of the government services that are being provided that older persons, the older population can access. Stacy, there are two questions, two hands over here. So we'll take from that side and then we'll come back to this right. side. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I have a question for Mr. NHT and I also have a suggestion, a best practice that we, pra we do in Clarendon as it relates to senior citizens. Excuse me, could you indicate where you're from, please? I'm from SDC. I work in Clarendon, but I'm also from Manchester. All right, so Mr. NHT, if you are retired, and you are receiving pension, say from the Ministry of Education, but you want to do an adjustment to your house. Are you eligible or is there any form of loan or grant? You are getting a monthly pension, say of $70,000. Can you get a, and you are a husband and wife, so one is getting that amount, say one is getting 60 something. Can you apply to the NHT to say you want to change your roof then? Is that, um, is anything, any benefit available there for that? Thank you very much for that great question. We serve persons 
between ages 18 to 65. We have had persons who retire at age 60 and have been receiving a pension. And our compliance department would make special arrangements for them, depending on their situation, for them to contribute. Because a part of our policy says that you must be contributing in order for you to access the benefits from the National Housing Trust. However, unfortunately, if you're over the age of 65, we would not be able to assist you in that, in that manner. All right. And just to share a best practice, and this is linked to the social aspect of the, the aging population. In terms of in Clarendon, you have several groups across the region, but in Clarendon, you have the falling development area committees that adopt some of these elderly persons. So they identify persons with needs and they adopt them. Because sometimes the elderly feel frustrated, they feel abandoned, they feel like there's nobody there because you might have your family and they're overseas or they're living in another parish, so you're alone. What I'm encouraging the groups to do across St. Elizabeth, Manchester, and some in Clarendon in the other areas, you can have an outreach arm, a social outreach arm to what you do. So you can adopt some of these elderly. So when it's their birthday, you go and you have birthday parties with them. If they are in need of care packages, diaper, wheelchairs, and you have agencies that provide those, Food for the Poor is one that can assist with those. And uh, what we call the Mormons, some of you may know of them, the Church of Latter-day Saints, they can also provide wheelchairs. They also provide wheelchairs. So if you have those needs and those groups within your space, this is something that I'm encouraging you to do to ensure that the elderly or the aging population does not feel as if they are alone. We have a responsibility too to ensure that you are all okay. Thanks. Thank you, SDC. In the interest of time, I'm going to just move the microphone to the two ladies here. Good afternoon. I'm still in the interest of the elders, the aging. What I'm concerned about is we have the free health center and we have the manager hospital. And that's funny, I'm from Kingston, but my mom is there. So, you know, it's free to visit. But what I'm concerned about, when they go there, you know, doctor tell them they have to do MRI or, you know, ultrasound, whatever, mammogram. I think they should have a place, because it's so expensive. So I think they should have a place where the elders could go, where they pay less money. Because, you know, when you go 50, 60,000 for MRI, most of, majority cannot afford it. So I think they should have a place we, you know, the elders can go and pay less money. That's my concern. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, I have two things to speak on. First is the housing and then the health. Um, for persons, it's good that they're building up houses and stuff like that, but for what about for persons that are working minimum, minimum wage um, like that, so, you know, they don't have that big money to pay at the same time. So that was a domestic worker or somebody not working that excessive amount, like for 6,000 or 7,000 a week. And then they, they want to purchase a house, you know, but they're gonna, how, is, that, is there a provision set for that um, category of person receiving such pay in that regards to that area? And um, for health-wise, I know that there are, um, health funds for persons that are elderly and if you have five other sicknesses you are able to get access but at the NHS but what if you are working and somehow you just pick up you not five but you just pick up one maybe terminal illness and at a point you reach a stage that you spend all you have and you really don't have any more money to spend and you go to the doctor and they give you like to go to do some tests but when you go to the public places, they tell you that you have to go outside. Machine not working, and you have to spend either 5,000, 15, or 20,000. For example, for me, every time I have to go to do a test, I have to pay excess. Because every time I go there to the public place, they say not working. Sometimes I have to pay 10,000, 5,000. As a matter of fact, I've been working, and I'm not working anymore because I have to spend all my money in um, sickness. But I'm thankful I'm alive. I went back to the public hospital again. 
and uh, to do some blood tests, and we have to pay about six thousand or seven thousand dollars. They said the machine not working there. I would like for young, not uh, for young person, even like myself in that category, like you know, a system with such a power way. If we can pay the, the exact amount, you know, we could the, uh, uh, a system could set up where maybe a half or a quarter of it because not you can't um, pay without uh, money. So I would like something to set up for us as young person as well, who can't afford it. I mean, uh, for those who can't afford it, that is well done. But for those who cannot really afford it, I'd like to, you know, ask if something could set up for persons such as us. Thank you very much. I'm going to allow our health specialist, Mrs. McFarlane, to respond. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's very interesting that these issues are very real as you're putting them forward. Um, with respect to the cost for investigation, we realize that that is where most of the out-of-pocket spending comes from. Because you have free access to the healthcare system. You, you can go free, but when it comes to the tests, then you have to pay. And for the majority of the elderly know that it does not have um, health insurance is very, very challenging, especially the medications added to that. Also, the Ministry of Health, I know, is embarking on a national health insurance plan, which is really supposed to be geared towards reducing some of that out-of-pocket spending um, in terms of with the time that it will take to actually be realized. We would have to then make a suggestion based on the discussions to the Ministry of Health again of the need also, there is a program within the Ministry of Health, uh, within the public sector, that if you really cannot pay for the investigation, you can access. But it's something you have to ask about, right? So if you have a test to be done and the hospital, the, the government, you ask, ask the admissions. I think they have a fund that can um, help you to pay for some of, of the costs. Um, with regard to finally the... the Catchment, I know Mandeville and its surrounds, I grew up here too, we, we grew up on um, harvested water in tanks and so on. And with the evolution of the black tanks, that's really overwhelming. Um, we would suggest to you a thousand cases, it's that serious, of dengue. And um, the mayor mentioned those, the, the holes that are drilled. But in your own home, you have to treat the catchment water that you have. The, the lids of the black tanks should be kept closed. So when the mosquitoes breathe, they can't get out, so they die. And if you have to open them, you put a mesh over the top. So if they breathe, they get trapped. They don't come out that easily. Or if you, do, if you, cannot, if you don't have a mesh, it's a big tank then you may have to do the treatment with um, the public health division here can help you to get the treatment for that. One last thing, waiting time at hospitals are inevitably long. Emergencies are not. Um, I think it's a good suggestion. We, we, we want to continue to take your comments to see how we can improve, especially our accident and emergency unit for more efficiency. So whether it's emergency or not, to see really how we can help to move through. But I agree with the mayor. We're encouraging persons to try and use your health centers as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. McFarlane. A question at the back or response or query? Uh, go ahead. Two comments. Good day, everybody. Um, I wasn't too sure whether my concern was relevant to the discussion, but I'm happy for the skit that the um, councillor from Manchester presented about respect. And I have experienced many times, you know, that how, how elderly persons are being dissed, you understand what I mean? This, where we go to the bank, whenever we go to the, well, I, I 
use the bank in Old Harbor. And there are sections for the, the senior citizens and sections for the, the ambulance and so on, and so the young ambulance. And as a senior citizen, I have had to sit in the bank for hours. They have like four or five tellers attending to the young people and one teller attending to the myriads of senior citizens. And Oh, everywhere. Okay, so where is the respect for us? And I am tired of hollering out. Old people have things to do too. I make that noise whenever I go to the, to the bank sometimes. Old people, I don't even say senior citizens, I say old people have things to do too. I don't know how relevant it is for the POIOJ, but that is one of my peeves when I have to go out. Another one though, this morning when we alighted from the bus, I made the <laughs> gesticulation that, oh, when I go abroad, and I embark or disembark from a bus, there's this step that goes down mm -hmm. and picks you up and comes up with you so you don't have to strain, you know, to get in or off. And I'm wondering if the public transport, the buses especially, yes. couldn't retrofit some of the, the, the buses mm -hmm. so that people like me, I, I don't like to be pushed up, you know, you know, so, some, some side men, or you call them conductors, get push you up. I like to know that I am independent and I am not pop down and thank you, thank you. You know, <laughs> so I... <laughs> so, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they'll be pushed up on a bus and it's not the people handling you. Right. You, you understand? I don't like that. So I wonder what the members of the PIOJ can do for some of us, because quite a number of us travel by ourselves and travel on public transportation, all right? right. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Just a public, quick public service announcement. The driver of a blue Toyota Yaris, license plate 6064HU, I think you are being asked to move your vehicle. That 6064HU, blue Toyota Yaris. <laughs> Thank you. So we have been looking and hearing some of the implications of aging population and we have been seeing, I, we have been hearing some of the issues and the challenges that you have encountered, the older population and persons who, of course, will be getting to that particular age. So we are grateful for that. We also want to get from you some of the opportunities because we, we are actually here to explode the myth and to look at opportunities. So s begin to think about uh, opportunities in terms of economic livelihood, what can be done. I heard the issue of retrofitting our buses to greater facilitate persons who may, mean, may not be able to quickly get up in the buses. So these are some of the opportunities that we want to, to look at from the various sectors um, within society. We have a question or a comment. No, this is a personal. some help from the, 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 the health ministry. I have a, um, the, my neighbor beside me, no one is here, and there's two black tanks and a concrete tank. The two black tanks open for years, the concrete tank, and I, ca I have to shut up in the house and sweat because the mosquitoes, there's no one there. Some months ago I saw some people with some yellow vests going around, and they, were, uh, they just come to the gate, and they ask, do you have any, any um, drum with water or whatever? But they don't come into the yard to see what is happening. I remember in my girl days, the, the inspectors used to go around, go into the yard, see what the back is like and all that. You see nothing like that again. And so people just live careless. And, you know, it, it, it affects the neighbor and they don't care. And you, the neighbor, can't even talk to them. As soon as you say anything, the 
matter how nice you say, they get offended, right? He's too black tan, and I don't know where to go to get help. You know, I said that I would ask somebody to try to go bleep. You don't know they might have cameras here throwing things into them, something, and come up with something different. So I don't know if I can get help I'm from the Palmer's Cross area. Okay, so we have made note of that. Yes, um, the public health department, or do you have a health center close to you? A health center. Do you have a health center close to where you live? Well, it, it's, it's supposed to be in a district close to you, though. How far is the health center from where you live? You have one in your district. Where, where do you live? I'm living at the, the um, Palmer's Cross. Um, there's a lane just below the, the school on your right. In Clarendon? Yes. Okay. So you go to the nearest health center. If it's not in your immediate community, okay. when you go to the health center and report it there, and they will send you a public health officer to sort it out. Okay. Because chances are, because it's open, it's breeding yes, yes. the mosquitoes. And I mean, I'm when I'm saying mosquitoes, I mean disturb, you can't open it. Yes, and this is for everyone else. The public health department, they are the ones that deal with it. The inspectors are there, and they can come out and help you. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Mrs. The counselor for that area is here, and she will have a discussion with her afterwards. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. All right. Just to make, I see some other responses to this side, Stacey. But just to note, too, as indicated before, um, you may have recognized and you would have seen from the play that the issue of pension and income security sometimes is pervasive within the older population. Um, you may not have had a persons within the older population may not have been involved in a formal sector and would have been exposed to a pension. And even if you would have been exposed to pension, the pension that you're getting now, it may not be adequate. So we want, to, we want to hear from you what are some of the economic opportunities in terms of economic livelihood that may be able to support or better support older persons. What are some of the opportunities from, from the perspective of an aging population that even persons within the, the younger age cohort may be able to be involved with to support this, this um, population and to, to provide an economic livelihood to this to the older population. There is a question right in the middle. Yes, Miss. Good afternoon, Thanks. everyone. Um, the path Sogra is going. The path. Yes, okay. they are encouraging us to take. We need to use it, but it is not helping in our, in our community because there are many people in there who are in need and even unable to send their children to school, and they cannot get any help from the past. Although they have been there and registered, they're not getting any help from the past, and they're there. Um, I'm wondering what you can do to help them. Okay, and so the um, concern is that the PATH program, there is an obvious need within your community yes, for I that don't program. Know, your, your social right. workers to come around to see them. And um, secondly, there are many cases that go to the clinic, but remember that the, the clinic has to send emergency cases to the hospital. So you need to improve the spaces in the hospital for these emergency cases and the bed spaces as well. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. We have made a note of that. Are there any other particular issues? Okay. There are two. Good afternoon, everyone. I am from Clarendon. Uh, what I am very much concerned about the electricity bill. I am a senior citizen. I live alone. I have children, but they are not around. And I am wondering what is going to happen. Because for me right now, might be they, they will have to take it out of my house. Every month, it keeps going up and up. Um, and as I am here, I sell it at this point because nothing has been said about it. 
So please, madam, I'm asking you if you can see, shed a light on this matter. Okay, I don't know if, well, JPS is not here, and I am I'm not sure I am the person to respond to that, but we have taken a note of that. There are, we're going to take about two more responses. One from the lady who has a microphone. There is a response here. The lady to the far left. My far left. Thank you. Well, um, it's not really a response in regard to the light bill. That's fine. I'm talking on the, um, I'm talking on the um, past. What I realize, uh, what I would love to understand, does this past program caters for the people who have difficulties sending their children to school or that or not? Because there are so many children out there, the parents cannot afford to send them to school. And when they go by the past office, they give them a run around and they just cannot be benefited. And people who are not in need, they are the ones getting the benefit. Because when I think of a person who might have um, what, two, four, six children, two for each, two, e each, each, two, at least two, each parent have a, have a different father. The three sets of them, the fathers are abroad and the fathers support them and the mother work. And those children are on part. And you have children there who the mother not working. It's like eight of them, the only the father is working. Just days work sometimes. They had it very hard. And then the part people, uh, when they come around, they give them a run around. They cannot get through. So I don't know if this part is for is a friendship thing or whatever. But you know, okay. it's very difficult. And another thing, mm -hmm. in regard to the health with the public health inspectors. The public health inspectors, when I was small, public health ins inspectors used to go around in different areas. And at that time, so people used to keep their environment clean. Government didn't have to pay anybody to keep their environment clean. However, because they are being um, paid now, they, they, clear, they throw garbage anywhere because government is going to pay for to clean it up for them. The public health inspectors, they are not going around in the areas. They are not leaving their offices. They are staying in the office, and when you make a report to them, they tell you they are coming. And you wait, you wait, you wait, you don't see a public health inspector. Where I'm living, it's a disgrace to see my area with garbage. And you have like Kitna trees and so down there. And no public health inspector. Why? I don't know. Everybody sits in their office. Okay. Where first time people, public health inspector just to fall, just fall in Kitna trees. Okay. They, and they walk hills and valleys. And they sit in the office, and when they want to go at a the point they jump in their car and they're gone and then at the end of the month they send in their claim and people are suffering germs and every sort of thing out there affecting people all right That's so great thank you for your two interventions i'm going to take the other question okay. and then we will respond all right thank you wait sir sorry sir before you um there is a lady to my far left please go ahead ma'am Good afternoon. I'm just trying to find out from the health department or whoever represents health. Um, when we are going through a season of dengue, and it's that you'll hear the commercial that if the fever goes over three days, then you should go to the health center. No, when you have children having fever from Friday, Thursday, and you go to the health center, on Monday, you hear that doctor says not seen any more patients, only 30 patients for the day. Now, what do you do? You don't have the money to go to a private doctor. And you hear that doctor says only seen 30 patients. The child is there with the fever. What do you do? Okay. So I'm going to ask Mrs. Collette Robinson from the PIOJ if you could respond to the past quickly respond to the path and they need to respond to the, to the health, public health issue. Thank you. Uh, just to say that with respect to PATH, and PATH is a, a, a program of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, I can't speak on their behalf, and that you, you continue to take up your complaints with the PATH office that is um, 
in terms of the specific complaints because there is a mechanism for selecting the, the families on path. It concerns me greatly to hear a person saying that there are a lot of children that are not in school because um, they are not on the, on the program. And we need to be we really need to be aware of what those numbers are and if they really are not consistently attending school, then that should be something that is already flagged within the Ministry of, of Education in that system. But um, the, 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 the specific complaints really have to be taken up with the, the, the path office in the, in the parishes. With respect to the health centers, um, I was not aware that there were still health centers that were taking like just limited number of persons. This is something we would have to report because we know we're trying to extend the clinic hours to take the burden off the hospitals. So I really, we will have to refer to the Ministry of Health and to have them address that. However, if it's a child with the fever for three days going for, it's very dangerous. So I would suggest that you go on to the hospital if you can't be seen there because the children are more susceptible, they're more vulnerable, and they, they're more at risk of, of, of um, getting really sick with the dengue. So please make an effort. I don't know that they should be turning back children. That should not be so. So we would have to make a report to the Ministry of Health. Thank you. And our last intervention is from this gentleman. Good morning. Good morning, citizen. You know, I come here with a word to say, if I let, and people are here on the good card to give us what you need to say to the people who are there. You know, I have to give thanks for the citizen people. And I hope people may come to this, this system of sins meeting that you give yourself to him for God are speaking to us. You believe that? God are speaking to you people. For you know the Bible says, three score and twelve, if we reason up strength, then you know you can talk to God in your little way. You know, I like the, it's very interesting. Mandibet. I live at Belfield, but everybody have to go to Manville. And sometimes I see we are sick people. If, uh, when I, I said to myself, it seems like nowhere is yet for them to, to let themselves or nobody don't concern about them. For sometimes people I know they go to Manville and a, 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 a needy man, a, a son man, he in the in the head. And you know, it is concern to us. That's this, mean, this, this scene of fear, bringing out a, a soldier, meeting to the world, devil, it's Manchester, Jamaica, that citizens can bring this program that people may hear who come out, who come out of it, especially Mr. Mall. And I tell you that it's very interesting that look into this, the sick people that are in Manville, and for some time you look and see they're making police station. And the sick people, they murder. You don't know when they, they get some people and lick them, and you don't get them out of it. If they can find some place and put them, this is my few words. Thank you very much. So we see the important issue of mental illness and that older population and even younger persons have or are becoming susceptible to mental illness and it's a very um, important issue that we need to look at. So as we continue the dialogue, even outside of the parish of Manchester, just to note that we have recorded and we have taken your concerns and we know that these particular concerns are at the heart of the, pr the people and as policy makers, as program managers and as project developers and project implementers, we want at least not only hear what you have to say, but look critically at how these can be put into practice. 
for the development of our people. So we are trying to basically explode the myths of aging and we hope that what we have brought to you will help you to begin to see that there are quite a number of development opportunities coming out of aging. So we thank you very much for your participation and we look forward to the continued dialogue and the continued engagement. And at this time, I'm going to hand over to Mrs. Harold Davidson. Well, Mrs. Mrs. Blake Hall, thank you. Thanks, Mrs. Brown, Brown Bailey, and thanks to the PIOJ team. If there are other questions and concerns, at the end of the program, the contact information is there. There are also booths to your right, or it's to your left, it's to my right. Please go there. They have a wealth of information and some of the issues that you may raise, you might just get some answers. Oh, there are also some booths on my left. So visit them and uh, interact with the group. After Mrs. Davidson has done the vote of thanks and you go outside, we have provided refreshments with you, for you. So please partake of that. I now call on our communication specialist, Mrs. Gwyneth Harold Davidson, to move the vote of thanks. Thank you, Mrs. Blakehall. On behalf of the Planning Institute of Jamaica, it is indeed my pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks for all who are attending here. We'd like to think, thank the following persons and organizations who helped us to fulfill the objectives of today's event. The Mayor of Mandeville who came and welcomed us and also the Custos of Manchester for supporting the series and giving us the assurance that they are paying attention to all the needs of the citizens. We would like to thank the Chamber of Commerce from Manchester who gave an early commitment to help to spread the word about this and to participate in any way that they can. Also for the Jamaica Constabulary Force, the National Insurance Fund who are here as booth holders and the National Housing Trust who came on board with us and our sculptor Tony Palmer who is from Ipswich who is showing opportunities that are available in the parishes. The theme of the series is aging and the National Council for Senior Citizens has been with us from the very, very start. As a member of the committee, we thank them and we wish to thank the Mandeville representative, social worker Mrs. Patsy Smalling for connecting us with the senior groups in the parish, especially those seniors who organize the skit and who helped everyone to become feeling connected and to give fulsome participation. We would like to thank the, Nation the Northern Caribbean University FM who assisted us with early publicity of this event and for the Jamaica Information Service which is here providing national coverage. You are being streamed live and also full coverage for the event. Persons who are not here will be able to see the stream on the JIS Facebook page and the PIOJ Facebook page after today. Our home here in Mandeville is the Golf View Hotel and we'd like to thank all the staff who met with us or been on the phone for helping us to put this, this event together and for all their professional services from doing the decor and the hospitality which you have experienced and the refreshments which you'll have after this event. And to citizens from Manchester, from Clarendon, from St. Elizabeth who journeyed here today, some of you had a very early start. Thank you for making it the, public, the Planning Institute of Jamaica today and for this dialogue, which you will notice we have Ms. Roxine who has been taking very detailed notes and be assured that your words don't end here today. We ask you to stay in touch and uh, as Mrs. Blake Hall mentioned, the information is at the back of your program, how to do so. And tell your friends that we will be in Ocherios on November 14, St. John Parish Church, when we take this discussion north. Thank you for listening.
So once again, thank you very much. Have a very good afternoon, and let's continue the dialogue. Who's playing the music when you came in? Who's playing the music when you came in? 